Welcome back to what is hopefully the last episode of re-engine swapping the case swap Miata. Uh, today, in this episode, we are going to finish putting the engine together and fire it up and see how it does. So I already got a little head start. Uh, I put the transmission in. So I don't know if you can see it well, maybe from this side. Trans is in, uh, not bolted to the engine entirely. There's some bolts are started. Some of the bolts are started. Uh, I'm gonna do the top ones, tighten everything down. And then uh, I'm repainting my intake because when I degrease it, it got really weird. I don't know how to describe it. It looks like some of that degreaser had muriatic acid in it or something and it kind of really cleaned parts of the intake. So I just hit it with some silver. Uh, so it looks nice and pops in the engine bay. Uh, same stuff I painted the block with. That'll be dry. Um, once I get the trans bolted up, I'll put the drive shaft in, put the exhaust up, or start hanging the exhaust maybe. Uh, turbo on, that kind of stuff, get all that stuff going. Uh, and I mean, once, once this is in, it's just plugging everything back in. I'll get everything else as far as I can tonight. Uh, team no sleep, I'm about to go crush a Red Bull. And then we'll see where we are. I My plan is it is Wednesday the 6th right now, July 6th. My plan is to have it running by Friday afternoon. Um, there's no reason I shouldn't. I believe I have everything I need. So, uh, man, my garage floor is salty. Uh, yeah, let's get to work. Good tip before I actually get started. If you are ever installing a transmission on your own in a K-Swap, a BP, whatever, you can hook a ratchet strap up to that point around this hook here and then run it. In this case, I ran it like on the oil pan plate and you can tip the engine back because without a trans, the engine sits very like, you know, very far this way. So by tipping it back, you'll make it so that you can actually put the trans in without it having to be like in the trans tunnel. So you tip it back as far as it will go. You're not going to hurt the engine mounts and then you just the trans like slides in, it's incredible. So if you're ever alone, do this. If you're not alone, have somebody like push back really hard on the trans. I mean, you can see how much wiggle there is. So I'm gonna bolt that all together and I'll pick you guys up once we're starting to do fun stuff like the turbo and all that good jazz. After much fiddling, we are ready to uh, put the turbo back on. I left it pretty much as a whole kit to make it easier on myself. All right, I'm gonna make this brief because I really have to go to bed, it's like 1 a.m. Uh, I'm also gonna preface this with, I stopped filming after I put the intake on and I've done a lot since then. I've just kind of gotten a rhythm and decided to just keep running with it. So, um, it's pretty much done. Intake is on, water pump assembly's on, belt is on, radiator is in, all the coolant lines for this are hooked up. I still have to make, remake that coolant line that runs from the turbo outlet. Uh, down to uh, the water neck under here and then uh, Dylan has my fuel pressure regulator which I'll get back tomorrow and it has oil in it it has trans fluid in it I put the interior back together uh, I should probably make a list tomorrow of what it needs all the electrical connections are plugged in I do still have to replace that NB sensor which is not the end of the world uh, these are still loose because I need to prime the oil. So I'll take these out, I'll take the plugs out, crank it over, check the oil level and all that stuff, make sure it builds oil pressure. Uh, intercooler piping and the intercooler are not on. Sway bar is not on. Um, but other than that, I mean, that's probably a couple hours of work tomorrow. And maybe some on Friday, depending how spicy I get with the intercooler hanger. Uh, I need to do something because what we have right now is not good, so. Uh, yeah, definitely farther than I, uh, definitely farther than I intended to get, so I'll take that as a good thing. Uh, I'm going to be really tired at work tomorrow, so if I didn't have work tomorrow, I would probably just stay up until like 3 or 4 a.m. just to knock it out, but I think it is time for me to clean up 
and then go to bed. So I'll pick you guys up probably tomorrow, if not Friday, when I'm finishing this thing up. And we'll uh, we'll hear it fire up. Oh yeah, all the exhaust stuff is on too. Underside is fully complete. Everything is tight and ready to go. So good stuff. All right guys, to catch you up. I didn't do any filming today. It's Thursday. Um, we are ready to build oil pressure though, is the gist of it. Everything is hooked up. Got the fuel pressure regulator back. All the lines are run. Intercooler piping is on. Intercooler is hung and solid. And uh, I did blow a main fuse already. So here's the old guy. Pro tip, um, don't put the power wire on the wrong stud on the alternator because it will just immediately pop. It looked like I was welding in the trunk. So fix that. Everything should be hooked up. Everything should be tight. Um, I'm gonna crank it right now. Injectors are unplugged. Uh, spark plugs are out, so it should have no resistance. It has plenty of oil. I have a jumper pack on the battery. I'm gonna get all this stuff off of here. We're just gonna crank it until it builds oil pressure. There's no water in it, uh, just in case anything is wrong and I have to pull it all back out. I don't wanna drain, have to drain any water. So it has oil, trans has oil, everything's hooked up. Um, this is about it. So we're gonna hop inside crank her over and see if it builds oil pressure so it's totally stock motor just the oil pump is empty and new so it's always a good idea to crank it over beforehand make sure it builds pressure and gets everywhere it needs uh, the sensor is up here so if the sensor has pressure the turbo has pressure and there's pressure up in the block higher up in the block so it's a good good reading area uh, i'm really nervous so if this doesn't work then I'm probably just going to park it for the rest of the year. So let's crank it. So quick update. I keyed on and it started spraying fuel. So this O-ring on injector four is bad up on top. So I'm going to have to pop that out uh, and find a replacement for that. But for now, I've just capped the feed line with a 6 an bung. So, or a 6 an cap. So we can still crank it over, still build oil pressure, make sure the engine's good. And then once we know that, we can figure out things like, you know, finding O-rings locally for fuel rail. This does take a while, so, um, but we have power everywhere. The only thing we're not going to have is uh, speed. I have to pull this off because I accidentally popped the cable out from the back. So uh, clutch is not blood or anything, so we're not going to crank with that. It should crank over pretty smooth, but this is probably going to take a minute. So let's, let's let her eat. One eternity later. So we have 25, 30 PSI cranking. I checked the oil, filled it up again. So we have oil pressure. Um, if I had an O-ring, which I might, I'm gonna take a look. Uh, we would definitely try to start it right now. Hook up the uh, fuel line, hook up the injectors and all that stuff and give her a whirl. So I'm gonna see what I got. I'd love to hear it run tonight, uh, but I'm not gonna run out again. It's 10 p.m. So if I don't have it, I don't have it. And we gotta wait till tomorrow. Dylan had an O-ring and as you can see, we are holding fuel pressure, so this is good. I have water in the uh, radiator with some water wetter. Uh, that's just kind of the trend now for us is just water and water wetter. We will have to empty it or like drain part of it before the winter so that we can put antifreeze in it. But uh, the track car struggles to get the temperature, which is great. And I kind of want that for this because it likes to run a little toasty. So um, the only thing left is bleeding the clutch and I don't have to do that to start it because I have a little delete thing. Uh, so we won't be using the clutch. We are gonna start it or try to start it, try to start it. Uh, no reason it shouldn't fire. Everything is good. All the fuses are good. Uh, it's like 11.30. So I'd like to start this and then go to bed. Uh, I will sleep way better if I know it starts. So let's just, let's just get to it.
there you have it. It starts, makes some weird noises. I think some things are just like hitting other things. Like it could be this pipe right here is hitting the uh, O2 sensor and it's like chattering. Uh, the clutch needs to be bled. So it's, that's what that like weird squealing noise was. I think it's just the release bearings like just barely touching the face. Uh, I'll be doing that. I might start one more time just to see if that's the knock noise over here. Uh, otherwise, fired right up. So that's a good thing. It's got good oil pressure. It's got like 90 pounds of oil pressure. Uh, until I bleed the clutch, I don't want to get it hot enough to bleed the coolant. Um, I did drill some holes in the radiator, or not in the radiator, in the thermostat to uh, allow for it to bleed a little faster. If you guys know how hard K's are to bleed, um, helps, that helps. So uh, yeah, I'm going to start it one more time, make sure that's not anything like super internal. Um, but yeah, I'll pick you guys up once I've bled the clutch. So it sounds like it's all coming from the transmission. I think it's just the uh, fact that it's not bled, so it's probably sitting somewhere weird and like chattering back and forth. I took a crowbar and like touched it to use it as a earpiece. And the engine sounds really smooth. Nothing's coming from there. The exhaust is not leaking. I thought it was a little exhaustly because of the way it's puffing, but I'll bleed the clutch tomorrow. Uh, worst case, if it's something in the trans, I know I can pull the trans very easily. The rest of the engine sounds fine. So it'll need a little idle tune-up probably. Um, everyone's a little different, but I can just probably just do that with a little set screw on the front. Uh, but yeah, hopefully tomorrow afternoon it's ready to rip. But pick you guys up then. So good night for now. Figured I would give you guys an update. It's Friday. Uh, there were The noises were coming from the transmission and even after we bled the clutch, when you put the pedal in, uh, it made this squealing noise that was really bad, which who knows what it was, clutch misalignment, whatever. What we ended up doing is pulling the trans, looking at everything, didn't find anything like really crazy alarming. Uh, ran the motor with just the clutch and flywheel on it, no trans, it was really cool, no exhaust, sounded really sick. Uh, everything sounded fine internally in the engine, it was great. Put the trans back in, line it all up, blood the clutch. Everything's great now. Uh, clutch makes no noise going in and out. Uh, everything is good. Now the next issue I have is it runs great at cold temps. And then when it gets warm, it uh, leans out immediately. It goes to like 18, shuts off one idle. Uh, map readings are okay. Both the OEM and the AEM wideband agree. Uh, so it's not like a sensor is bad. Uh, I'm gonna do some probing later, probably check grounds to stuff. Uh, I know that all the grounds are attached because I attached them all, double checked. Uh, everything is plugged in and it's got water in it. So like it's got, it's reading coolant temp, it's reading intake air temp. Because sometimes if it doesn't have a coolant sensor, it doesn't run because it's trying to adjust for your temperature and it, it can't. So, not sure what's going on there. Uh, but it does run. It runs really well when it's cold. Uh, which is a relief. No weird noises. No smoke. No leaks. Uh, so yeah, that's the update for today. Didn't film any of it because I was... Uh, I don't get angry often. I was pretty angry. But it's back together now. And the majority of the kinks are worked out. It's just, there's something stupid that I'm forgetting that is wrong. Um, and I'm sure once I find it out, I will be ecstatic and we will drive it, but I think I'm gonna clean up for tonight. I'll let it cool down and just do a reading of like AFRs and stuff like that when it's cold to see if it's just something when it's hot. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm gonna clean up and I'm gonna go enjoy my evening because I haven't had a night off in God knows how long. So uh, this is good, this is good. I gotta tell myself this is good, good progress. I will pick you guys back up once I figure out what the problem was. Uh, I'm probably gonna send some stuff to Rick, a couple data logs and have him just try and give me some pointers and things to check. So until then, oh, uh, transmission out and back in, including diagnosis, diagnosing and like checking everything in like an hour and a half. So not sure if it's something to be happy that I'm good at because I've done it so many times, but that's pretty good. I swear we're going on our first drive in a second. 
Um, it's been, it's Monday. It's been a couple days. I've already gone on a first drive, uh, and it didn't go well. So mechanically, everything was great. Uh, but the battery wouldn't charge. So I was like, all right, well, sorry. When I started it, it died. So I was like, oh, alternator, you know, I'm watching the voltage drop in the battery. And I'm like, alternator's not charging. We've got a problem. So I figured when I put the main relay in backwards, or sorry, the wired the alternator in backwards, I blew it. So swapped the main relay out, uh, went to AutoZone, got a new battery and a new alternator, put it in, same thing. I drove it for like 15 minutes and the battery died. I'm like, no idea, like the charging system is simple. It's power from there should make it to the main relay, should make it to the alternator. So even at battery off or key off, there should be battery voltage at the alternator. And there was nothing, 0, 0.00 volts. Pulling my hair out, as you can see. And uh, I remember my buddy Matt telling me that it was really hard to install the main relay because of all the wires that we had to tuck in there for the case swap. And I was like, it wasn't that hard. So I'm like, let me double check. Sure enough, the lug for the alternator had slipped down when I tightened the bolt and it just wasn't, wasn't installed. So there was no voltage going either way, nothing, no trigger. Uh, so I pulled that out after like pulling the ECU out, taking a look at the motherboard and all that stuff. I uh, installed that put everything back together, checked voltage at the alternator, and we have matching battery voltage, finally. So I think we're good to go. Um, I'm gonna start the car, idle it, make sure the battery's picking up voltage. And if so, we're gonna take it for a real, hopefully first rip, put some miles on it, and enjoy the car finally. Cause it is now July 11th, and this car broke April 11th. So three month anniversary, if you're into that kind of thing, this is it. Time to drive this car. I, I'm like so hopeful that this was it. Uh, it has to be, it has to be it. So let's give it a shot. Can't do any hard pulls because I don't have a stand for you guys, but it seems to be working. We're out here cruising around. Uh, I'm gonna put some miles on it. It's not inspected right now, so it's kind of sketchy. And I'm literally driving past the sheriff's department. Uh, just gonna put some time in it and see what happens. And I'll let you, I'll pick you guys up when I get back home and let you know how it went. Hey guys, sorry I'm a little sweaty. Uh, I just spent like an hour cleaning my whole garage. It looked kind of like a depression cave. Uh, the last three months have been kind of rough with this car broken, so much better mental state now, for being honest. Um, <clears throat> drove the car, took my coworker for a rip. Uh, he works B-shift, so I swung by and grabbed him. Drove it over to Dylan's car. Made some noises here and there, like there's always, like I left a bolt somewhere, probably it rattled out uh, and tinkered behind me. Everything looked to be in place when I checked it when I got home. Uh, the only issue it's having now is it's running a little hot and that's because I don't have the under tray on it. It's up there. Uh, I had this issue two years or last year and it's just because the intercooler is not touching the radiator. So it's letting the air divert around. Um, not a big deal. I'll install it tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to wash the car because like, I don't know if you can see this right there. This is clean. This is like three months of just dirt. So she'll need a good wash. It needs an alignment and it definitely needs an inspection because it's a couple months out. <clears throat> so I'll drive it to work because I work down the street, but much farther than that, probably not until it gets inspected. So, um, yeah, so. That's gonna be a wrap for this episode. Uh, I'm gonna try and make cars and coffee this Saturday with it. Uh, hopefully it's inspected by then. And then uh, we're gonna get back to regular business of just driving cars, having fun. Uh, by the time this episode airs, we should be leaving for Miata's at the Gap, or sorry, Miata Reunion, the, week, the Thursday after this. So we're leaving the 28th of July. Uh, my plan is to have this out. Maybe this will be the weekend we are at Miata's at the Gap, or Miata Reunion. So, uh, whenever you're seeing this, if you're at Miata Reunion or you're at Miata's at the Gap, please come find Dylan or myself. Uh, please come say hi. I have stickers. I love talking to everybody. Um, I will probably be this sweaty because it's going to be hot down there. So I apologize. <clears throat> uh, if I look angry, I just have natural uh, RBF uh, resting face. So feel free to come talk to me. Always love meeting people. 
uh just let me know your name if we've talked on instagram bring it up i talked to a lot of people on instagram so please don't take it personally if i don't remember your name um i still want to meet you for sure so <clears throat> i'm running on it's late again there's a habit going on here i'm gonna go to bed but for this episode that is a wrap i will see you guys this weekend maybe uh or next episode so stay tuned stick around thanks for watching you know the deal like comment subscribe for more and we will see you next time